beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed stay blessed there are levels of exploits in this kingdom you will never be able to attain unto until you overcome this temptation. Now you will know why, for instance, a secular musician can sing anything and still have influence because there is a transaction that happened on this mountain. In this mountain, you see, the commodity of exchange is not goods and services, it's your soul. What shall it profit a man? when you gain he's using a business description you gain the whole world and lose your soul so you can use your soul as a commodity of exchange and when you give your soul you can get this as a reward influence over territories that's why he said i wish above all things that you prosper but that in prospering make sure that your soul also prospers because the economy of Satan will never allow you prosper even as your soul prospers. You can know who Satan has empowered because the higher your wealth and your influence, the more your spirituality and your passion for God. But when you rise in influence and still maintain spirituality, it shows that you have tapped into the economy of heaven. Is God helping someone? Wherever we can stop tonight, we'll pray and continue. It's a conference. But let me find somewhere to tie it and then we'll pray. Remember, we're looking at the message that saves. So the Bible says that man fell. And according to Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20, very powerful scripture he says the soul that sinned it shall die i did not define a very important terminology in dealing with the matters of redemption and the gospel is the word sin what is sin um people have brought different kinds of meanings and expression to sin sin means two things according to scripture essentially number one rebellion number two disobedience that's it sin in one word is rebellion as seen in the life of lucifer sin in according to adam and his fall is disobedience so no matter what greek and hebrew expression it boils down to two things disobedience and rebellion what is rebellion a willful continual violation of god's known principles there are consequences that's where we get the word iniquity. He says, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Hallelujah. So now we see that there is a condition. The soul that seen it, there is a verdict already. The Bible says that soul shall die. Do we agree? This is from scripture. The soul that seen it, it shall die. 
Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. If it is true that the soul that sinned it shall die, then it means all of us, according to this scripture, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. The, every one of us. Including babies. Including children in the womb. The only difference, and that's the reason why children don't go to hell. If you've been asking that question, let me answer it now. The reason why there are no babies in hell is because the nature of sin without the partnership of your will cannot send you to condemnation. There has to be a participation of your will for it to be credited to you personally. He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. However, you've not gotten to the age of discretion to discern right and wrong and willfully choose. And if God sends babies to hell, then he has violated the character of his person in giving man the ability to choose between life and death. That means, let me also answer the question, what happens to those who die and never hear the gospel? There is a system of judgment allocated for them based on scripture. They cannot be judged like those who have heard. The, the, the verdict of condemnation is only released to your life at the instance of your hearing and rejecting Jesus. When you read your Bible, you will read that when Jesus went to Hades, the place of the dead, Apostle Peter tells us that he preached to the departed saints. Is it in your Bible? He gave them an opportunity and they believed and Jesus marched out with them. Being the firstborn of the begotten and many of the departed saints arose with him and walked through the streets of Jerusalem. This is Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. So based on this verdict, the Bible concludes that all have sinned. All means the educated, the uneducated. All means male, female. All means whether you are European, American, Africa. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So the verdict of death becomes a verdict upon everyone. Is that true? Based on the integrity of this scripture. But Ezekiel 18 and verse 23 now begins to introduce to us what we call the mercy of God. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 23 here's what it says have i any pleasure at all that the wicked should die saith the lord god and not that he should return from his ways and leave this scripture now began to introduce to us the possibility of a state and a condition where man can be bailed out of that verdict because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And that everyone who sins, the verdict already is that you will die. So if God is to be just, all men should die. And I hope you know his justice still prevailed. The only difference is that one man died the death of the all men. But that death had to happen. Are we together now? If this is a thousand naira... It must be paid for to be taken. And then I pay for it for you. For you it is a gift. But for the one who sold it, they still paid it. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. It is from this scripture now that the person of Jesus comes into the equation. Jesus is the epicenter of the gospel. It starts with an old story. But somewhere in your journey of understanding the gospel, if you do not find Jesus, you are in error. No matter how accurate your foundation is. Because every, no matter where you start from that story, the converging point is Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Jesus shows up for time's sake. And here's what the angel said to Mary. Matthew 1, 21. He said, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. Is the Hebrew word Yehoshua, Jehoshua, where you get Joshua, God our salvation. That's the name there. 
So the name already captured everything that Jesus would come to do. Now Jesus shows up through the womb of a virgin. Do you know why this is important? Because this is the frame, this is the pillar of the Christian faith. How he was born matters. The Bible takes out time to meticulously tell us that an angel comes to appear to a young virgin and tells her that you will have a son and that you will name that son Jesus for he will take away the sins of the world. Mary was perplexed and said, how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. That means the next time God tells you something and you say, how shall it be? The answer was already in scripture. Every time you are asking, Lord, how will this thing come to pass? The answer is that the power of the highest will overshadow you. Now Jesus is born. And when Jesus is born, the spirit of the Antichrist begins to move through Herod. Why? Because there cannot be two kings within the same kingdom. The birth of Jesus, they use prophecy and they look for Jesus. Isn't it amazing that Jesus could die as a baby? That's why the angel said, run away and hide him. Run away and hide him until Herod died. And he went back and said, now you can go. They that seek the life of the child are gone. Because of the birth of Jesus, there was a cry in Ramah. Two years and below, children were killed. That immediately tells you Satan is not as accurate as we think he is. Because the spirit of the Antichrist had to kill people at random. There are many things about Satan we have been made to believe. Satan was also created. He depends on many things about the saints to also learn the ways of God. They kill children. And then the Bible says Jesus, according to Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, that Jesus increased like every other child in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. And then for 18 years, in fact, at age 12, the Bible says, isn't it interesting that at age 12, he was just getting into teenage where his colleagues would be running up and down. But the Bible says Jesus was found in the temple preparing. There is a strong message right here because excelling in destiny is a product of timing. The Bible says it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth. Every time is not the right time. There are times you can maximize destiny. At age 12, your Jesus was already preparing for that assignment. Theologically speaking, for the next 18 years, we will not hear about Jesus again. Now, there are many kinds of debates as to what happened during those 18 years it's not for me to bring it tonight but the next time we see jesus he's a 30 year old young man going to be baptized of john john is now baptizing and the nature of john's training was that he was introduced that whoever he saw the spirit come upon that was the messiah so john would baptize and look and say you can go John would baptize and look and say, you can go. He got angry, insulted people, called them brood of vipers. He was, and finally, he looks at this 30-year-old gentleman and by the spirit, he says, behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. He said, look, I have seen you in the spirit. I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes. And Jesus makes a very powerful statement. He says, suffer it to be so. The word suffer means permit it to be so. That scripture be fulfilled. Let me tell you this. No matter how great you are, no matter how mighty you are, you cannot open your own heavens. Jesus, the word, walked under a close heaven for 30 years until he encountered John. The Bible, your Bible says that he now submitted to the ministry of John when he was dipped out of the water and he came out is it in your bible it says and the heavens over jesus had he started ministry before that time he would have been surprised and there was a voice from heaven this is my beloved son 
the spirit of God came upon him as a dove resting upon him and there was a statement from the father there we see the trinity very clearly the father is speaking the Holy Spirit in the similitude of the dove is resting upon him and the son now receiving the spirit and he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he commanded creation to hear him that was the beginning of the ministry of Jesus news went all over town I'm wrapping up now imagine in the plateau that people suddenly begin to tell you there is a young man in town we don't know where this man is coming from but strange things are happening another person is running and saying my mom just became healed by who that same young man another person is saying can you imagine supernatural supplies oh what manner of man is Jesus we sing but I hope we know what we are saying you just picture it this man turned the city upside down if he came around your area you would begin to rejoice because everything that was wrong will be made right immediately. He came to the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law with fever. He literally held her. This is your Jesus. So that when you say, I want to be like him, you must be sure of what you want to become like. Are we together? Yes. Jesus. The Bible says when it was evening, they brought unto him all kinds of people and he began to preach and say repent now the kingdom of heaven is within your reach the word repent is a kingdom word we'll deal with that tomorrow repentance is not for sinners repentance is for those who want to become like Christ you will learn that for as long as you desire to be like Jesus the language of repentance must remain with you forever to repent means as we look at him we see the areas where we have heard of so we repent to repent means to realign most people hate to use the word so that they show that they are not sinners repentance is a kingdom word show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. Please give me five minutes and we're done. Jesus began to teach. And he began to demonstrate to them the life of the kingdom. Then he gathered 12 people to himself to walk with him. Notice the instruction he gave them. Please listen, don't miss out of anything the Spirit of God is saying tonight. When Jesus called the 12, the first mandate was follow me. No matter how great you want to become in life, when God calls you, he does not call you to ministry. He calls you to himself. The first assignment is not follow it. Follow me. And he leaves you with an assurance that if you follow me, I will make you. My goodness. He does not only make fishers of men. He makes anything. There is a name he is called. The maker. The man standing before you today is a testimony that the maker still makes. But he only makes those who follow. Follow me is a journey of faith it is the riskiest journey of a believer because follow me means you do not know where you only know who is going follow me is a risk in our world that is obsessed with guarantees where are we going and God says follow me as proof that you trust me there are many people today who cannot excel because they do not know how to follow him with the simplicity of childlike faith if it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. Today we do the things that God has helped us to do. Not because we are any powerful in ourselves. No. It is simply because we have mastered the foolishness of followership. That you never fail following him. 
You may not understand, but you follow him step by step. Our fathers and our elders here will tell you that they have gotten to where they have gotten to today by the grace of God because of blind followership. If he says move, you say yes, sir. There are many people that when the devil wants to destroy them, he will give them visa. And they will go out of this nation, out of the will of God. And roam around like Cain and return back in pain. It is important to know that your victory as a believer is not generated within you. It's derived from your being in the will of God. When he calls us, he teaches us the excellency of his will. Follow me follow me is God speaking to someone for someone this may be your message tonight God is saying being scientific about your destiny alone is a risk you have been excessively intellectual brain work says go left there are times that God will produce wine by telling you to fill the pot with water it does not make sense but follow him you see let me tell you this there are times where you can go to the, the sea that is where you find fish. There are times where you can have a good boat. That is the tool for fishing. Your net can even be good and yet you will not catch fish. Some trust in horses, others chariots. He says, but we. No wonder he, when God wants to use men, he strips them of everything that makes them sufficient. Until you are empty, you are not ready to be used of God. So when he calls you, when he asks you to follow him, usually you will follow him with a backlog of all the things that represent your experience and your strength. So he will step back and allow you to exhaust them. Sadly, they will fail you one by one until they get to a point like Jacob where there is nothing you are standing upon. Then he comes. The strength of God does not look for strength. The strength of God looks for those who are weak. You will be learning hopefully tomorrow that it was not strength that defeated Satan on the cross. That weakness is what defeated Satan. Weak people are truly strong people. Anytime you see weakness, fear it. There is strength there. Weakness always kills strength. When you see people who look weak, they are strong indeed. For when I am weak, he says, then strong when you come to God and say Lord my destiny is great and I do not have the power to make meaning out of my life that position of brokenness and weakness is attracting the strength of God he will come and pick you on the wings of his might and do wonders with you you will be the first the first spectator of what he does in and through your life I know what I'm saying his strength does not look for people who are full of themselves when Jesus came to be used by God, your Bible says Jesus had to strip himself of everything that would make him God until he was weak in himself. The Holy Spirit could not come and pick him. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the clouds. Father, you are king over the flow, and I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still. We'll continue tomorrow, but I want us to pray for a minute or two. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for in it, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Believers, we have come to a season in our life and even in this church where God wants to make strong people. He says, but the people that do know they are God. Not the people that are aware he is there. The people who know they will be strong and they will do exploits. Jesus Christ is the epicenter of the believer's Christian experience. Tomorrow we'll take our time to tie up why he died, 
Why did he have to die? Why did he rise again? The Bible says that today he's seated, exalted as Lord and King. Do you know why that is very important? It is not everything about Jesus that saves you. I hope you know that. There is an exact information about Jesus you must believe to be saved. For instance, believing he's a prophet does not save you. For instance, believing he was a good man, you are right, but you will not be saved. There, there is an exact information about him you must believe to be saved. So you can know whether you are saved or not. Not just by your longevity and your stay in church. Let it be known to you, O Israel, Peter preached the first message after Pentecost that this same Jesus has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. In fact, here's what he said. I hope this does not disrupt this service. We're going to pray. I'm sure that many of you may probably have watched or learned what God has done and is doing in the life of this man. I am your son. I am your brother. I'm not a stranger from somewhere. I hope that tomorrow in the course of our teaching, I will share with you a few of my encounters to be able to inspire someone here that there is nobody God cannot use. I found this Bible and I believe. I said what I said now because by the privilege of my work with God, as some of you may have known, he has opened me up to dimensions of supernatural possibilities as revealed in scripture. And sometimes it's very difficult to contain these things, especially when the hearts of people are opened and very hungry to receive. There are people who came here and whilst you are sitting down listening to me, this same experience, something is burning within your spirit like the two men that went to Emmaus. Did our hearts not cut us? That this is not just a preacher speaking intelligently. This is more than intellect. This is the spirit of the living God calling men to come back to the foundation that will give stability Many of our children, sadly speaking, respectfully speaking, have not encountered Jesus based on the definition of the gospel. There are many people across the body of Christ who are well-intentioned people, but based on the provisions that the Bible makes for salvation, we have not encountered Jesus. I'm going to be making an altar call if you would allow me. Is, am I okay with that? But just two things I want to do. While I was teaching, I just saw light. And I saw three people here. And of these three people, the Lord just ministered to my heart to tell you that you are the Savior that is raising even over your family. And I want you to help them because I just saw light. I took out time to explain the things that I explained because I know that I want to respect the protocol and not do anything that is outside of our norms and my apologies if I violate any the modus operandi but this if we gathered and we prayed I know that much prayer has gone in this meeting so please let me just pray I want to pray for you there are people that God is going to be calling into deeper levels. Equa Plateau Church is entering a new season. Believe me when I tell you this. It's a, it's a season our fathers have prayed and cried for certain dimensions of the move of God. Not from a religious standpoint. As I watched our fathers now, old men, I still remember their burden and their passion. Helping us as children. And God has come again to honor it. So I'll just pray and I'll make an altar call. Father, all these ones that you have brought. 
in the name of Jesus by the ministry of the Spirit I am praying for you now that in Jesus name who is the son of the living God for many of you that fire that you had rain had Bonke talk about that fire that you had TL Osborne talk about that fire that you had Peter Youngren talk about those who have joined the cloud of witnesses they came to just hear your city many years ago I have come with that fire that you will experience Jesus not just as a the founder of a religion but as the king of kings and as the lord of lords the savior of the world now hear me I want to make an altar call there are people seated here you are saying my dear brother I have heard you and I know sincerely that I need Jesus there are people who are saying I know for sure that my life is not the way it should be I have been around church but I want to based on what you have taught I confess that I do not know him and there are others who are saying if you give me the chance my life has gone haywire even though I remember making this decision I'm tired of playing church and playing religion I need Jesus please may I request that if allowed I want you to come and stand here I want to pray for you there's no need being ashamed or being afraid be the first person whether you are inside you're outside if you can make your way here please I want you to come and stand in front of me don't wait for anybody to come first be the first person win that war I know there are people forget about who is looking at you at your left and right let's celebrate them as they come Please come and stand right in front of me. I mean it with Jesus. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down. Lie you will tear down. Coming after me. Please come, join them. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down. Coming after me. Hallelujah. Are you still coming? Let's celebrate them. Some of you are saying, I want to come, but I'm ashamed of my friends. I'm ashamed of my family members. No. This is the conference where you mean it with Jesus and make that decision. He says, it is appointed unto man to die once and after that, the judgment. The Holy Spirit has come to convict you. No matter what else you learn about God, if you do not subscribe to the truth of the gospel, you are not a Christian. You may be a member of a church. You may even be a worker in church. But it takes receiving the life of Jesus by acknowledging his substitutionary sacrifice. No wall you won't lie you won't tear down coming after me. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for this bold decision. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. I'm amazed to see even the children coming to Jesus. You know, Jesus said, let the little children come. And he says, do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. I want you to pray this prayer. Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed of. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, that he will in no wise cast away. When you come to Jesus, you are not coming as though you are a failure who is being pitied. See yourself as though you are coming to receive an award, except that this surpasses every other one you have received. It is the very life of God. He says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And that this life was structured such that you have to receive the Son to have that life. 
please say after me, everyone. And for those who are watching by television, you're watching from any nation, here is your time and chance to give Jesus your heart completely from your home, your office, from any nation you're connecting. Even if you're watching by way of rebroadcast, here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. I'd like you to lift your hand and say after me, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive into my heart your life, your grace, your spirit, your righteousness. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that you are my king and I declare that you are my savior. The power of sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. The Bible declares that no man can come to the Father except through the Son. You have brought these ones by your spirit and by your grace and we thank you. By the authority of scripture, I declare that your sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you recipients of the life of God. I declare that from tonight, I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That you be grounded and established in righteousness. You will go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. Um, there'll be someone waving their hands or someone just uh, some counselors let's celebrate them as they just walk to the aisles there please let's let's celebrate them God bless you God bless you God bless you you'll meet with a few counselors they'll have a word or two with you and then you will be back to your seat Hallelujah. I understand that there is another session tomorrow in the morning by 10 if I'm right and then the final session with me is in the evening. May I encourage you please make the sacrifice to plan so that you can come and learn some of the things that we're going to be sharing. It's a conference that seeks to equip the saints and I trust that at the end of this conference that our lives will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn your ways to understand the gospel clearer. Thank you for the honor that you have given to lead this many to Jesus. Thank you because the entrance of your word, the Bible declares that it gives life and understanding to the simple. We pray that this that we have heard tonight will remain in our spirits and it will produce fruits 30-fold, 60-fold, and our desire is a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. For everyone who departs here, I pray that they are blessed in the name of Jesus, that you will return back with testaments of the hand of God upon your life. May the Lord bless you and increase you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.